story of interest. I'd like to know that. Here, you're constantly cleaning and oh, horrible. But anyway, oh, I got to turn off the heater. Hold on. Since Doc is away. Um, my clock has turned five o'clock, so I'm going to call to order this uh, special meeting of the Capitola City Council, um, and we'll start, uh, Chloe, with your announcement. I thought all meetings were special. Gee. Uh, some are more special than others. Okay, so we should be, this is more special than others. Okay, got it. Information on how to join the Zoom meeting using the application or a phone is available on the published meeting agenda and also on our social media accounts. Our website is not working. However, you can stream the meeting on YouTube and by joining the Zoom meeting and as always watching on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8. The meeting is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. We have a new uh, technician this evening. His name is Cedric. Thank you for being here, Cedric. And thank you, Mayor Story. Hey, thank you, Chloe. And I also want to extend my thanks, Cedric, uh, for joining in us um, and um, being our technician this evening. Um, so next we have uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, um, and then um, and I think I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance uh, at this time. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? That has no changes to the agenda this evening. Are there any additional material? Mayor Story, none were received. The next part of the agenda is uh, oral communications, which is the opportunity for members of the public uh, to address the council on matters that are not on tonight's agenda or for items that are on the consent agenda. Uh, if you would like to speak, just raise your hand in Zoom um, and uh, you'll be given three minutes to speak. You can also dial star nine on your phone um, or you can send an email to public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Um, is there anyone that would like to address the council at this time? 
Mayor Story, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised and we have not received any. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I, actually, we do have someone raising their hand. Um, we have Rory McBroom. Good, okay. Um, go ahead, Mr. McBroom. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Hi, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Rory. I wanted to um, address, I'm a local father, community member, and cyclist. I love riding my bike around town. The, um, the bike paths are amazing. In fact, my favorite thing to do is actually biking my kids on one of these fancy cargo bikes. So I've got my five and six year old in the back, which adds about another 150 pounds. I feel comfortable and stable, but there are some places around town that I'm, I'd like to ask for you guys to consider um, adding to the public works budget to consider um, repair and, and kind of primarily in, in one area. And that would be on the westbound on Park Avenue, westbound heading from SoCal into Capitola. And I find that the my most, oh, I don't know, treacherous uh, part is as I come underneath that overpass, there is a, um, there's a city sewer or city drain um, that takes up the entire uh, bike lane. And it's not only myself, but it's my peers that, that I find kind of navigate this. I had a, a conversation at Campfire about the bike pass and, and also kind of stumble upon this conversation that it's also a soft point and sore spot for a number of other cyclists. I see uh, middle schoolers, elementary schoolers taking the same path and driving over it. And what ends up happening is that you can't stay in that bike lane. You have to veer into, you have to kind of merge into traffic to get around it. It's um, usually we're, we're headed to school along with the other kids at the same time as people are headed to work, um, heads down, just kind of, you know, a lot of times they can be absent minded. And I feel like it, can, it poses as a threat or at least a concern of mine and, and, and other community members. So if I may, I'd like to ask that you guys consider adding, adding to the public works budget to consider repair along Park Avenue um, and allocating money specifically for the for the bike lanes. Thanks for your consideration. Yeah, thank you, Mr. McBroom, for bringing that um, to our attention. Um, just as a matter of clarification, uh, so that we can maybe um, better understand exactly the area you're, you're speaking of. You mentioned this is just coming from Soquel, just past the overpass, but is it before you get to Kennedy Drive? Uh, Mayor Story, I may have removed his permission to talk. Um, okay. The, okay. Oh, here he is. Okay, oh, sorry. Did you, did you hear my question, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, it's as you pass, if you're coming um, in the bike lane from SoCal, pass underneath the overpass, and it's at the set of lights of the exit ramp as people are leaving the freeway into town. Good. Okay. Th thank you for that clarification. Um, and again, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak uh, in um, public comment? Mayor Story, I, now I do not see any other with their hands raised and we have not received any emails. Okay. Um, with that, I'm going to move us on now to uh, item number five, which is uh, um, staff and city council comments. Are there any staff comments? Just a few. Uh, first, I do want to apologize. As the city clerk mentioned, the website is down. It is a remarkably challenging situation to fix. Um, not as easy as one would think. We are on it uh, and doing our best to get it back live. In addition, I just want to also announce that tomorrow will be the first night of the Capitola Leadership Academy. Uh, we have 21 participants this year, which means it's one of the larger classes we've seen in a number of years. So we're really looking forward to, to doing that process with some folks who want to become more involved with the city.
Any other staff comments? Seeing none, I'll bring it to council comments and we'll start with uh, council member Bertrand. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So um, I just want to thank uh, Roy uh, McRoom to um, come to the city council Zoom meeting and talk about uh, his concern. Um, I've been concerned about that also. I recently brought it up uh, last week with um, our uh, director of public works. And um, I brought this up multiple times in the past because I noticed a lot of uh, students that go to um, the junior high across the street from us, they, they take that route. So uh, you're not the only one. Um, some of the kids that come through there and they also skateboard. So I appreciate your comments and your detail of the con a, a problem. Um, we have a great one on Park Avenue, but uh, when they go underneath the freeway, freeway, as you just described, it is a problem. And so thank you again for your participation. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Council Member Bertrand. Uh, any other council members have comments? Seeing no hands raised, um, um, I wanted to make um, a comment, and, and this is in reference to um, uh, Officer Al Verado uh, from the Salinas Police Department, which last Friday night was um, killed during a routine uh, traffic stop. Um, and I just want to extend to um, you know his family. Um, and and the Salinas Police Department are most part with um, condolences uh, for their loss. Um, and um, and and I did note um, that some of our um, officers went to the academy with uh, Officer Alvarado, and so um, I want to extend um, you know our sympathies uh, for them, and also encourage if there's um, any ways that we could help uh, reach out and support uh, the uh, Salinas Police Department, um, as well as um, you know the members of uh, the Capitola Police Department. Um, you know, after this tragic event, I certainly would like to hear uh, from uh, Chief Daly um, ways that we could do that, um, if and at the appropriate time, if nothing else, to maybe send uh, a letter of support uh, to the Salinas Police Department. Um, um, and I know that, um, you know, and, and as Jamie has done, has put the um, flag down at uh, uh, half mass, and, um, and which will be that way until his memorial service. And hopefully um, we can be kept informed about when that may be. Um, so I just want to, um, and unfortunately, wanted to acknowledge that um, and uh, and share you know our our uh, sympathy um, to the Salinas Police Department. Um, and and um, so those are my um, thoughts um, or comments this evening. And um, with that, let's move on to the uh, consent items. Um, the consent items will be handled in one motion um, unless um, any council members wish to pull it for further discussion. There's only one item this evening on consent, and that's the fiscal year 22-23 budget calendar. So what's the will of the council? I'll move approval of the consent there's, calendar. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? I can second that. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Uh, so we have a roll call vote, Chloe. Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And the consent agenda passes unanimously which brings us to our general government public hearing portion of the meeting this evening. Um, and um, 
that will be a um, presentation um, and on the 22-23 budget, budget principles and uh, council goals. The recommended action is to adopt the fiscal year 22-23 budget principles and goals and identify related key projects and programs. Can we um, have a staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor Story. Um, and thank you, Council, for approving the budget calendar. I will get, coordinate with the city clerk to get that on to all of our city calendars. And we'll take one moment to share my screen. Does that look okay, Larry? Yes, that looks great. Thank you. So by way of background, um, as you're all well aware, each year we prepare and adopt a budget um, which provides the city council direction regarding our day-to-day -day functions and establishes the framework for our delivery of services to the community. Adopting uh, budget goals and principles and, and identifying some key projects establishes some metrics in which we can measure performance. And it also helps um, clearly articulate the council's priorities to the residents. So budget principles, goals, and key projects. Uh, principles provide the overarching guide to budget development, like goal, where goals look at um, a high-level look and how to implement the budget to comply with the principles. And then key projects drill down a little bit deeper into line item detail within the budget to achieve the budget goals underneath those budget principles. And these three together help focus staff and the city council on the important stuff that we have ahead of us. So as far as um, high-level budget principles, we basically have three. We have fiscal policy, public service, and public improvement principles. As far as fiscal uh, policy principles, those consist of maintaining a balanced budget that ensures ongoing expenditures can be met with ongoing revenues, use one-time revenues for one-time expenditures, and ensure the budget plans for future cost increases and attainable revenue estimates. Public service principles consist of maintaining and improving upon the transparency of city operations and government accessibility. Um, recognize the high priority that the community places on the public's safety. And analyze future service level increases with their long-term financial impacts to ensure uh, fiscal stability. Public improvement principles consist of maintaining the city's infrastructure by providing maximum funding for the pavement management system. Maintain and improve capital as natural resources and sustainable green programs, and ensure maintenance and cleanliness of city facilities, sidewalks, and streets. So I'd like to give a little bit of a status update on last year's goals um, before we start talking about next year. So um, we had develop options for council consideration to address rising CalPERS costs. We've had some conversations on the fact um, or in the FAC, and, and that's an ongoing project that we continue to try to figure out how to attack that one. Um, working with the Finance Advisory Committee to identify future revenue options, that's also ongoing. Um, continue working with Capital and Mall Ownership Group for redevelopment of the mall. That's currently on hold due to the um, pandemic. Uh, work towards Coastal Commission certification of the zoning code update. Our Community Development Department completed that in May of 2021. Our COVID-19 response, we have a few things as far as response. Um, first is administer CDBG grant funds, which is ongoing. And just to put a little context to that, so far we've gotten about $244,000 of grants out to the community. $150,000 was for small businesses and $94,000 between um, Second Harvest community bridges, and gray bears. And we still have more money. We're still getting more additional funding out um, as, as we can. I'm um, collaborating with regional partners on the state rental assistance program. That is an ongoing project right now. Maintain city hall operation protocols to ensure health and safety of the public as well as the staff. That is um, ongoing and changes as, as uh, cases change and CDC recommendations and state recommendations change. And then uh, working with the local restauranteurs to establish parameters for the temporary outdoor dining, that was completed early last fiscal year as far as the temporary stuff. Um, transition from COVID-19 back to normal operations, 
again, that one's kind of an ongoing thing where we keep adjusting based on CDC, state, and county recommendations. But we are continually monitoring revenues and expenditures. Uh, we have explored grant opportunities for public safety, capital improvement program, environmental policies, and outreach programs. Right now we have a uh, community development department is working on an active CDBG application that would cover three years of food assistance for the community. The police department has received a tobacco grant and will be applying for an alcohol grant. Those, are, those grants are both for um, enforcement as well as education. Reviewing uh, parklets or outdoor dining. Um, and as you recall, our sidewalk and street dining ordinance was adopted in December of 21 and it's currently under review by the Coastal Commission. And the other piece of that was to review the village parking program once we kind of figured out the street dining. So we'll be bringing that, I believe we're actually gonna kind of refresh that at the next council meeting and get that going again. Um, the next one, make available fem free feminine hygiene products for all public restrooms. That project's been completed. Expand the emergency response planning and pursue grants for a city hall generator. We have received $300,000 grant and we've also um, added $90,000 from our facility fund and that, that um, project is in progress. Have City Council create set priorities for community grants. We've gone through the, um, the study and those results will be presented to City Council next month in April. Speaking of partnership with the school district regarding the soccer field, so the recreation staff and the school district have been working towards a revised agreement for the community center, but with COVID um, restrictions, the, the soccer field is kind of on the back burner right now. But once we get through that agreement on the community center, then we'll kind of revise the, uh, the soccer field project is, again, or conversation at least. Uh, partnership with Scotts Valley regarding recreation, summer programs, and services. The uh, city council in Scotts Valley decided to go a different direction and work with a nonprofit, so we didn't do anything, but that one is technically complete. Um, update our admin policies. We've done a number over the past year. We still have a long list um, that still need to get. We need, still need to get through, so that'll be ongoing, or at least recommended to be ongoing. Monterey Park picnic tables, we'll have that completed before the end of this fiscal year. Our signage from Pat Cove Locks to the beach in the village, that's been completed. Our implicit bias training for staff, we've had two training sessions so far. The third um, was just rescheduled for early June, so we will have that done by the end of this fiscal year. Um, prioritize our affordable housing and building community relationships. So on this, we've um, updated the inclusionary housing ordinance. We've completed the affordable housing nexus study and feasibility study, and we've adopted new um, affordable housing in lieu fees and impact fees. The community or building community relationships is ongoing. Uh, community development department has been working on that and continues to work on that. That'll, I, my guess, will be kind of an ongoing constant. Um, as far as capital improvement projects, we had the 41st Avenue Adaptive Signal. That is grant funded and currently in construction. We have the Monterey and Park Railroad Station Park and Pathway. The pathway is in design. It's also funded. And then the rest of that uh, RTC funding will follow, I think, for the uh, park piece of it sometime in the future. Pavement management program, that's ongoing. Um, they're working on that now. We, Kind of work on that every year and we fund it annually based on available resources. Mm -hmm. um, risk of risk in park, as you recall at the mid-year, we funded that project and we'll bid that out um, later this spring. The utility undergrounding there at uh, Bay Avenue and Cap Ave, uh, we're working with pg e and the undergrounding is funded. And then we also have the roundabout design at Cap the same intersection That'll follow the utility undergrounding sometime uh, to be determined in the future. And as of right now, just the pre-design and the outreach is funded. The wharf improvement project, uh, as Steve reported last week, the phase one is completed. Phase two can be bid out uh, this summer, uh, pending city council direction. And as you recall, um, currently we have about 4.7 million available. The full project that was presented last week is seven million, and then Steve uh, presented some options that kind of fall in between that 4.7 and $7 million 
range that we can discuss a little bit later. Um, Claire's pedestrian improvements is in design and will be bid out this spring. It's fully funded. And then the last four there, the Cap, Cap, Cap Ave Sidewalk, Capitola Library, Bloom Rehab, and Jetty Rehab were all completed this past fiscal year. And that kind of covers um, the high arching budget principles and last year's goals. So I'm going to turn it over to City Manager Goldstein and start looking forward to next year. James, James oh, okay. well, before we get into the next phase, I, I, I wanted to maybe put it out to council and see if they had any questions about what you have just gone reviewed, Jim. Sure. So, um, looks like we have uh, Council Member Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. Um, just a couple questions about some of the items, like the implicit bias training and the funding for like free feminine hygiene. Are we to assume that this is, is going to continue into the next year or I just can't remember where we left off. So as you know, when we start talking about priorities, whether it's to assume that yes, there will be free um, hygiene products for, for all of our bathrooms in the next years to come. So that's my first question. That's my understanding is that the um, dispensers are, 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 have all been installed and then our maintenance folk keep them fully, or not fully stocked, but keep them stocked as needed. Okay, great. And then for the implicit bias training, um, Jamie, you might have to help me remember, did we decide that we're going to continue to, did we create a timeline on how often we're going to be doing this or? So I don't, I, I, for general staff, we've entered a contract with Circle Up, and they've been providing the staff, the training for staff and our police officers. And so we're one training away from completing that scope of work. I think if we want it to be a recurring thing, I think we would need to make that decision. I don't think we've made a final decision about recurring training in that regard. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Those are my questions. Council Member Bertrand. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is about the Clare Street uh, pedestrian improvements. Um, so we're redoing Clare Street in general, right? Uh, uh, Council. Yeah, the project includes repaving Clare Street from Morph Road to 41st and then installing various uh, bike and, ped and pedestrian improvements. Okay, so in a sense, that's a project that's been approved. It just wasn't on the list, so that's why I'm I'm asking. That's all. Yeah, so we, we're we're calling it the Clare Street Pedestrian. I think that's what it was called originally. It's definitely more mm -hmm. beyond that, but it is a fully complete street project. Okay, thanks. That's my my major question. And um, okay, I'll say my other question now that you're on, Steve. I'm glad to see because I want to talk about the. Um, Park Avenue issue. Thanks. Questions from any other council members? Um, seeing none. Um, Jim, I did have a question concerning the partnership uh, with the uh, uh, school district um, over uh, the soccer, regarding the soccer field. Is it, which soccer field are we talking about? The one in J Street or at Monterey Park? believe Monterey Park. The Monterey Park, okay. I think maybe if we could just, you know, clarify that on our chart so we know. Will do. Okay, uh, with that, Jamie, you want to um, pick it up from there? Yeah, I will. Yeah, I just in looking at this list and the conversation about Park Avenue, I, I do think I do think we missed a project. Steve, can you chime in here? We put funding into a park avenue. I know you have something in design right now for some options to improve bike lanes on Park Avenue. We do. We have a, a traffic calming project, but it does focus on I would say from uh, Coronado to uh, Monterey. 
Um, we didn't really look at the freeway. We could actually bring that in as part of this project uh, under the freeway if we wanted to, but there is a hundred thousand dollars. We have one preliminary design. We're trying to get a couple options before we return to council. Okay. I apologize for missing that one on that list, but that is another project that's in the works that does have funding. Okay. If I, if I may, Mayor, if I may just make a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Council Member Bergman. Yeah, so RTC is going to be funding uh, improvements in bike lanes on SoCal. And, you know, I brought this subject up because I didn't know where the city boundaries were when we discussed this in the RTC. So it's the same issue going on at the freeway overpass. And I don't know if there's going to be more traffic, but I can anticipate more traffic if SoCal gets improvements and, you know, that whole section, there's a good bike lane on either side of the freeway, but going underneath that overpass, I do think it's problematic. So Steve, if that could be included, that'd be great. Um, and I did not ask Rory to make a comment. <laughs> so I'm glad he did though. It's nice to know that the public has the same concern. I think we can leapfrog and not bring in the area where the eucalyptus trees are, but we could certainly bring in the, uh, the Caltrans property and uh, and look at our improvements there. So that is all in Caltrans right away, but we are responsible for the Park Avenue improvements that go through there. Okay, well, I look for look to you to manage that. Thank you very much, though. Okay. Mr. Mayor, are we ready to proceed? Yeah. That's okay. So we're proposing a little bit of a different structure uh, that we have done in the past for this goal setting. And one of the things I thought might be helpful is to take a look back at our mid-year report that we just did um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, and remind everybody about the resources that we identified that are, exist uh, within the city budget. So you'll recall that we ended up after the mid-year adjustments with about $2.4 million in general fund balance. And that's including the 600 k in the COVID reserve account. So it's 1.8 at this point, sort of pure general fund, and then 600 k in the COVID uh, account. Um, in addition, we have about $250,000 more in the American Rescue Plan that we have not yet counted for that is available to be allocated to projects. Um, next year's budget will include around $1.1 million in Measure F funding. You'll recall Measure F was the voter-approved initiative that was intended to be dedicated towards sort of our infrastructure facing the beach. Uh, that $1.1 million is a rough estimate. We haven't done our budget estimates yet for next, next year, but that's probably in the ballpark of where it'll end up. Uh, in addition, you'll remember that we had identified a certain amount of ongoing revenue at the mid-year. I think it was around 675K or so, and we appropriated about 300K of that for this year. So there, there is another chunk of unallocated ongoing revenue uh, that, that is available at this time to allocate to key projects that the council is looking to, to uh, implement. And then we're going to go into the budget process. And when we go into the budget process, we'll be looking at, you know, another estimate of this year's revenues and expenditures, uh, and then our estimates for next year. And so I can't tell you how much there may be carryover from this year or what the resources will be in next year. But setting that aside for a moment, we have about 4.13 million dollars of fund balance or funding that can be allocated towards key projects at this time. Um, in the past, we've sort of operated with around a $500,000 fund balance target. Um, given the level of uncertainty, I think just with where we are right now, um, I would suggest probably aiming for something higher, maybe a $750,000 fund balance target. Or, or alternatively, we could aim for hypothetically a, you know, take the COVID account down a little bit and then aim for the $500,000 fund balance target. But if you do that, that leaves around $3.4 million available um, to dedicate towards key projects and goals. So when we, Jim presented the progress on the different goals from last year, we have a number of them that we would recommend carrying over to this next fiscal year. They include looking at the CalPERS costs. It's been an ongoing challenge for a long period of time, and we do actually have potentially a key project to help address that. Continue to work with the Finance Advisory Committee on future revenue options. Um, and you'll 
you know, we also have the parking rate discussion that'll be coming in front of council, which is related to that. And in addition, you'll see a goal, potential work plan goal for next year to think about a ballot initiative of whether we want to do that coming up in the 22 November election. The mall obviously remains a high priority for the city. Um, of course, until the developers are prepared to move a project forward, we are in a bit of a holding pattern, but I think it should remain as a goal. I would recommend it remaining as a goal for the city. Continuing to respond to COVID, uh, I'm hopeful, as I was a year ago at this time, that we are moving beyond this, but you know, our hopes have been dashed in the past, so I think we just need to continue to monitor um, the situation. Again, moving forward with the transition back to normal operations uh, and continue to seek grants, whether it's in public safety for our CIP, our environmental programs, our community outreach, CDBG, et cetera. Next slide, please. As I've mentioned, um, we're going to be tackling, we're going to start the conversation about village parking rates at our next meeting. Uh, it's not going to be a final decision for anybody who's tuning in. It'll be just sort of a work plan and going through different options for the work plan for council consideration. Um, the community grants project has been an ongoing one. And that is, I think we have in April, the hearing with our consultants who's going to start sort of diving into our process and looking at some of our priorities. Um, I think that the partnership with the school district around the potential soccer field at Monterey Park uh, remains, should remain a, a, good, a priority. Um, obviously, at this point, we need to maybe focus first on Jade Street properties, and once we get that done, then we can look over at, at Monterey Park. Continue the update of the admin policies. Um, continue to prioritize the affordable housing projects. Uh, you'll recall that we received $2 million in repaid affordable housing loans in this last year. So we do have resources to assist with uh, key affordable housing projects should they crop up. Uh, and then complete the CIP projects, keep them moving forward. So those were the, those, none of those were new. Those were all from the prior year. There's definitely some heavy lifts in there. Uh, the community grants, I don't think anybody assumes is going to be an easy process. And village parking is always a uh, robust debate. So there's a fair amount of, um, a fair amount of work associated with getting those items done. Then in addition, I put out a few sort of, sort of first draft proposals on kind of work plan items. Now, the idea behind these is that they may involve a lot of staff time, council time, community outreach, but often they don't involve a huge amount of cost. So the housing element update is going to be a very significant work effort for us this next year. Council Member Peterson has kept us abreast of the current situation with the uh, housing, the arena housing alloc allocation from AMBAG. And it's going to be it's going to be a challenge to find spots to accommodate all those units that you're um, apparently going to be assigned. Um, enhancing community outreach. This there's a number of different ideas that my staff has. I think it's a priority for this council and certainly for me to always try to be finding ways to better communicate with the public. Uh, and I think that that's something we should always keep our eye on. The regional bike share program has been something that our planning staff has been working hard on, coordinating with the county, the cities of Santa Cruz, Watsonville, and Scotts Valley, as well as a UCSC. Uh, we are hopeful that we'll be able to bring a proposed contract with a regional vendor to the council coming up here, uh, hopefully in the next six months. Comprehensive fee study. This is something that we do in our um, finance department. I think the goal is to do it every five years and it's due again. The hope is to do it in-house uh, rather than bringing a consultant in, uh, which reduces costs, but obviously is a workload issue. Um, the November ballot. November ballot is um, any items that we would want to consider putting on. We have to uh, decide on that by the end of July. Uh, I know that before the 2020 general election, we had a conversation about whether we wanted to put a tax measure on and ultimately decided to defer it given the situation with the pandemic. So I would suggest if council agrees that this could be something that we would agendize for a future meeting and have a dive into whether or not we want to talk about ballot measures for the November election. Memorial bench program. This is something that needs some work. Most of our memorial benches are old. My staff has some ideas, some revisions to the program to bring to council in the coming year. Uh, we want to get more parking enforcement uh, done with bikes. Um, and the police department has some plans around that. And then 
interesting kind of inside baseball is, is we do need to update our special event permit process. Right now we have a host of different code sections and policies that govern how these things are issued. And I think we can achieve some streamlining and some consistency improvements by fixing that. Um, with all of these projects, like I said before, it's mostly a staff time thing. Um, probably the biggest cost associated with these uh, would be obviously the housing element update, which can be funded with our dedicated general plan um, update fund, as well as the um, potential funding should we decide to look into ballot measures for potentially community polling uh, to take a look at where the community, their feedback about different ideas that we might have for the November election. Um, next item, please. So those were the carryover and the kind of the new work plan ideas that I wanted to toss out. Uh, and then in addition now, we have a, some projects to consider uh, allocating funding to. This, this wouldn't be a allocation of funding. This is sort of the first step in the budgeting process, but if we can get the guidance now, we can prepare a draft budget that reflects the council's goals. So you'll recall, uh, as Jim mentioned, and we had a hearing on last meeting, that we're about $2.3 million away from full funding about $2 million away from, um, from funding everything except for the floating docks. We could obviously scale the project back further if it's the council's desire to do so. However, there is an economy of scale, is once you have a marine contractor mobilized and on site, there's a decent argument and also the permits. It's a very complicated regulatory environment working on the wharf. That once you're there, you want to get the job done. Um, the community center. Council is aware that we are in negotiations about a lease extension for um, with the school district for the community center in Jade Street Park. Um, the community center needs a lot of work. There's sort of near term needs to things that really need to be addressed soon, probably between 150 and $400,000. The building itself potentially needs maybe a complete renovation and that's probably in the one to $2 million range, but that's really, that's a rough number at this point. Um, the library taught lot, that's a discussion I did not include in the staff report. I was remiss to, to have missed it. It came up at a recent meeting when we were talking about the closeout of the library project. Uh, and this would be for, a, for a enhancements to the tot lot, improvements redoing the tot lot at the library. Um, local hazard mitigation projects. Last meeting, Steve gave us a good in-depth review of kind of what's in our hazard mitigation project, reminded all of us. And, you know, there's a number of projects that I would suggest we should think about kicking off. One is um, something that, you know, the, the city hall is in the floodplain. We flooded once. It, the building is in dire need of, of repair. Do we want to take a look at making a plan? You know, figuring out is it, is this the site where we're sitting and we're going to figure out a way to abate, abate the flood risk or are we going to try to relocate? Um, so the suggestion here is to fund maybe a, third party to come in and help facilitate a bit of a dialogue and a pros and cons analysis to come up with what our long-term plan is would be for City Hall. Stockton Bridge, that's called out as I think one of the high, other highest risk things in the LHMP. Um, and we did the initial study on that to identify the options to improve Stockton Bridge. And I think that there's a number of different options that can start getting funded around the 350 range all the way up to a complete new bridge that would be spanning the creek entirely and wouldn't have legs down in the water anymore that potentially catch logs in high flow. Um, we talked about this in the LHMP presentation we got last meeting, sort of potentially kicking off a study to look at what the options would be around the bluff and the cliff drive um, stability, slope stability. Um, and again, another item that we discussed briefly was doing some engineering feasibility analysis about what we can do with Noble Gulch. And lastly, uh, it's called out again in the LHMP is fire risk reduction. Fire is always a concern, growing concern in California for sure. And the city does manage a number of eucalyptus groves uh, and that, that is another spot where we could put money in, in managing that and putting more resources into managing the eucalyptus groves and reducing fire hazard there. Next slide, please. Um, it's a little incongruous to talk about maintaining City Hall and also talking about a study for a new City Hall, but the current building is in pretty bad shape. Uh, I don't know that $100,000 is, is the minimum, but the building 
is 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 tottering at this point. And so I do think that we could consider putting some money in uh, to the facility just to tide us over because regardless of what we do, we're probably you know four to five years out from anything really happening. So we are stuck with what we've got for a bit of time. McGregor Sidewalk is an exceptionally expensive project. Uh, council previously historically has talked about this as being a safe way, a pedestrian path to get to McGregor Park. You know, there are ways to go not on the street if people kind of traverse through New Brighton State Park, but they're pretty informal. Um, it's a shockingly expensive sidewalk really because it's effectively a bridge. You know, the, the, the pathway, the sidewalk would have to be basically hanging out over the over a retaining wall. Um, and then there's a number of plant projects that are possible that we could consider from our climate action plan. Um, climate action plan talks about trying to increase community charging stations. I think electric vehicle sales double in 2021 compared to 2020 in California. California is the leader nationwide in electric vehicle sales. And I think that the demand for charging stations is only going to grow. They run around $10,000 of each. And I think that, that that is a concrete step we could take to help encourage folks to transition to electric vehicles. The roundabout at Bay Avenue and Cap Ave, that and the signal timing project are called out as two sort of infrastructure changes the city could make to help with um, a carbon reduction. Uh, the signal timing project is obviously in construction on 41st and that has a significant impact. The roundabout at Bay Avenue and Capitola would have one as well. Um, it's a heavy lift though, it's a lot of money. Uh, and then we're suggesting improving sort of the overall um, bike conditions and we could be suggesting potentially $50,000 you could put more in to start addressing and trying to go through the city and do what we can to improve bikeways throughout the city. Uh, Peary Park Bridge maintenance, you'll recall we did an emergency repair to that bridge, but Steve thinks that there's probably some other long-term repairs we could make. Something I wanted to put on your radar, about $100,000 there. Um, the bike park was constructed more than five years ago now and it's time for it to be renovated. Uh, we do think we have a potential couple, a potential donor and a potential grant that could be used to do that. So I don't think it needs a general fund allocation at this time, but I do think it's something we could include as, as a key project uh, for that grant and uh, donation funding. And then right now our CalPERS trust, which is one of the tools that we're using to sort of stave off some of the worst impacts of potential increases to our pension rates as well as a potential bridge to manage uh, the construction of the mall when that project happens. I believe we established a target of two, two, one year funding in, Cal in that fund, and we're about a million dollars short at this point of that one year funding in the uh, CalPERS Trust. And then lastly, pavement management. Pavement management is a never ending <laughs> um, need in the city. We do have the SB1, the RTC funding, fair number of dedicated sources that now come in for pavement management, but there's always more need. So there's always the um, ability of the council to put more funding into pavement management. So those are all the ideas that I've heard, and those are ideas that have been either discussed by the council, previous budget sessions, staff has identified as real needs, um, things that have come up in recent discussions. So we were trying to attach kind of rough budget pictures to all of those different sort of projects for council to think about. So for this evening, what we're hoping for is to get council action to confirm the high level budget principles. Those are the ones we've been operating under for a number of years. Uh, confirm the carryover goals. Um, we could obviously cut out something that we said we were gonna do last year that isn't done yet. Uh, if council thinks it's no longer a priority, um, but it would look for a motion to carry over those goals or make changes if council so wishes. Uh, take a look at the work plan goals that staff has suggested and um, hopefully approved by motion uh, those work plan goals and if council has any that they would like to add to that to do so. And then uh, my suggestion would be to identify the top key projects for funding and it doesn't have to be as granular as everything on that list. Uh, hypothetically, council could say let's fund the wharf, let's get that done and then let's put a third of the remaining project in LHMP hazard reduction, a third of the project in climate goals, and a third of the project in, you know, dealing with the PERS situation. 
and then we could come back with the specifics and different projects and line items in the budget. So that concludes my presentation. I'm available for questions. Councilmember Peterson. Thank you, Mayor Stork. And I think uh, City Manager Goldstein might have just answered my question in his last sentence here, but I just wanted to confirm. So there's a lot of projects here that have varying amounts of funding. I mean, one of them, I think it said it could be anywhere from $250,000 to $350,000 to $4 million for stock and bridge reinforcement. So based on what you just said, it sounds like we could just say tonight, yes, Stockton Bridge reinforcement is one of our priorities. We want it in the budget. And then staff would come back and say, hey, we can put this much towards it, or this is what we're anticipating it would cost in phases. And we can get down to the, like you said, the nitty gritty of the exact amount we want to allocate when the budget comes back to us. And right now we're just looking at the, the higher level goals overall, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. I think that's a really good example of the Stockton Bridge. <laughs> you know, we completed the study and I identified probably two or three fixes. And this is based on my memory from probably four years ago. Mm -hmm. So if we said, look, let's put some money towards that, really what would happen is, is we would come back, and whether it's in the budget or actually a separate hearing on that, and say, okay, we have $300,000 for Stockton Bridge. Here's what the different options are in the study. There's the near-term fix, the longer-term fix. You know, Do we want to save up for the longer term and we can make that decision? We don't need to make that decision. Frankly, you don't have all the information to make that granular level of a decision this evening. Exactly. And then my other question is for our ongoing goals, to support carrying those over, do we need to identify funding for those still? Or I, I know you, you showed us a list and some of them have funding and some of them uh, are partially funded. Um, and so again, tonight all we would need to do is say, yes, we wanna confirm those are still our goals. And then we would later determine how much of, of the remaining fund balance would go to those ongoing goals as opposed to the new ones, right? That That's correct at this point. Most of those ongoing goals are more um, work, uh, work plan associated, work plan intensive. Uh, and so they don't need significant budget allocations. But if you do confirm these are your ongoing goals, we will look in the budget and see whether or not we do need to include some budget allocations in the draft budget for them. Okay, great. Thank you. Council Member Bertrand. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, just sort of remind me, uh, city manager, in terms of CalPERS, when we put money into that fund, and depending on the amount we put in, do we potentially save money? I mean, I remember at one time we did pay off with a bond because we wanted to save money. We, we knew we had to pay. So what's CalPERS telling us right now? We know we're in deficit. So what is, you know, an appropriate fiscal way to manage that deficit at this time? Sure, that's a great question, Councilmember Bertram. So, so the issue for those of you who are tuning in for the first time is that there's an unfunded liability at CalPERS. That is for obligations, retirement obligations the city has accrued in the past, and this goes back 30 years, um, there's not enough money in the account for them. And so CalPERS has put in place basically a, a plan for us to get there, to put all the money in. And what that included after the Great Recession was a phase in, as they called it, to sort of ramp up our payment for that unfunded liability over time. And I remember when that happened, looking at it and seeing how much it was going to ramp up over time and looking ahead to 2022 or 2023 and thinking, oh, my God, how are we going to ever afford that? Well, we've done that. <laughs> and so we're making those annual payments on the unfunded liability. And so the ramp up, we're, we're nearing the peak of that ramp up payment. And in theory, and please don't hold me to this, in theory what will happen is, is that then payment will look more like a debt payment and it'll just be the same amount every year in the budget, which is much easier to deal with than a figure that's growing by a quarter of a million dollars every year. So that's the situation. And what we've done about it is we've established what's called a 115 trust, which basically lets the city set aside money and put it, invest it, invest it in, in the stock market that is dedicated to paying that obligation. 
So the money that's in the 115 trust can't be used to fund general city oblig obligations. It can only be used to pay that CalPERS debt. But the money we put there, we're getting a market rate returns on. So what we're suggesting at this time is at least consider putting some chunk of our money into that trust. We haven't done it in a number of years. It's been growing pretty significantly over time. And that then can be used to pay that um, that unfunded liability with CalPERS. Okay, so that's what you're proposing. Okay, um, I have another question in regards to the Stockton Bridge. And in general, um, the uh, climate mitigation issues that um, we've already identified uh, through uh, city planning and uh, community development, rather. Um, if we do anything to the bridge, shouldn't we be doing something in recognition that the whole Esplanade and potentially up the river are going to have issues related to um, sea level rise? We can't do it independently of those issues. That's my question. Well. So keep in mind that the primary issue with the bridge is that it has these two legs that stick in the creek, and those two legs act as, as dams, if you will, when large logs come down. So the issues with the bridge are less about the water coming from the ocean and more about the water coming from the hills. So the fixes that were studied in the um, Stockton Bridge assessment were really looking at ways to mitigate the risk of flooding from mountains uh, and not from coastal, not from being inundated by sea level rise. And so they included, I think, specific, um, Steve can go into details if we need to, but like deflector walls around those uh, those legs in the creek were one, for, that was, I think, the lower cost option that was identified in the study. And then the higher cost option, which is probably unattainable for a variety of reasons, would be to do a new bridge and then span the creek entirely and not have those legs that potentially catch logs. Okay, um, yeah, I remember when that report came and you just reminded me in terms of the deflector areas. So I was thinking, I guess, mostly in terms of if we built the new bridge with the recognition that we are gonna have issues with sea level rise and the whole issue of mitigation. So it was mostly reflective of my concern for that. If we're gonna do any kind of work on the bridge, we'd have to do something with that in mind as well, that's all. So I don't think we're going to go that far after what you said. We probably don't have the money for it. So thank you. I think that's it. Okay, any other council members have questions? Um, let's see. Um, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thank you, Mayor. Um, City Manager, I had a question about the CalPERS. I feel like there was a sentence and I could have totally just misheard you, but that it was sort of lumped into something to do with the mall rehabilitation too, or was did I hear that weird? You did, you actually heard that right. Oh, um, okay, can you elaborate on that? Sorry. No, that's that's actually a good question. And I don't know that we've discussed this, um, yeah, discussed yeah. this before. This may be an internal strategy that Jim and I have developed. So you'll remember, or you, you may may not have been on council at this time, but when we've been looking at the mall redevelopment, the city has identified the, the project would take several years to complete, which means that the city would not be getting revenue off the mall. There's potentially impact to some of the existing stores. So I don't remember exactly what we identified the, the, the cost, but we we think that there's probably a million dollar cost. Like if they came in and said, hey, we're gonna do this big mall redevelopment, we'd say, great, but we're gonna lose a million dollars of revenue over the next three years while you ramp this project up. And so I think council has we talked about trying to come up with a plan to deal with that. And that's been the thinking that Jim and I have had is, is that this CalPERS trust, particularly if it's coming at the peak of the CalPERS costs, could be used to pay our CalPERS bills through that, through that mall redevelopment period, which helps us bridge from one side to the other, and then the mall is done and the revenues start coming in. So that was that's a little bit of our thinking. It's an interesting question about when would you use a trust like this? Because uh, ideally what you would do is you'd use it to smooth out the peak in the CalPERS costs, but to smooth out a peak, you have to know when you're actually at the top. <laughs> You don't want to get in the habit of starting using the trust to pay down, you know, pay your CalPERS every year, and then you eventually pay off, the, use up the trust, and suddenly 
with the general fund hit because you haven't been using the fund. So mm-hmm. trying to figure out the timing and the best way to utilize the trust is a little bit of a challenge. And we've thought that the mall redevelopment might be the appropriate way. And the timing might be good because it might sync up with the CalPERS peak cost. Okay, cool. Thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. Sure. So Jamie, just a quick follow-up on uh, that strategy. Um, wouldn't the hypothetical million dollars be needed to backfill the general fund? If we're losing a million dollars in revenue, it means we have a million dollar hole in the general fund. Well, so the general fund currently pays the CalPERS UAL. So we would be relieving the general fund of a million dollar obligation. That is possibility, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Council Member Bertrand? Yes, thank you, Mary. I just have one question I forgot to ask. Um, there's the issue of uh, studying eucalyptus in terms of fire safety. So I was just wondering what eucalyptus this is going to be. Uh, uh, we have eucalyptus in the Rispin. Uh, we have eucalyptus along Park Avenue, which is probably largely owned by the RTC. And also off of Park Avenue, there's a whole swath of along that little creek that's owned by the state. And so I'm just wondering, and then there's up, Park Avenue near the freeway, there's a bunch of eucalyptus that we own too. So I was just wondering what's being anticipated here. And if it's with joint um, owners like RTC or the state, could we reach out to them and do it together? That's my question. I'll defer to Steve on this one. He's given more thought into what this project would look like. So there's probably three areas. Long Park Avenue, um, the RTC has recently completed a survey of their boundary. So we've identified some of the eucalyptus trees along Park Avenue where you overlook the Monterey Bay that are city trees and have them evaluated. There's the eucalyptus grove between Park Avenue and Balboa that's predominantly city property um, that we go in there and clean out. So that would be the second property. And the third property where we have had fire uh, concerns is uh, the courtyard property down along Uh um, by the Brookvale Terrace uh, mobile home park. We've gone in there and done some more, but uh, there's probably some more fire suppression work that we could do down in that area. I'm not sure it's fully eucalyptus trees, but uh, that's another area of concern. So you're not worried about uh, the Rispin area? Well, <laughs> Rispin has a, a lot of issues. The, the trees along the, the street we have recently had evaluated for structural issues. But from a fire endpoint, um, it's so covered in ivy right now. I'm not sure, but it's certainly an area that uh, is thick with eucalyptus trees. And any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I'll, um, I had some questions. Um, Jimmy, starting from uh, the recap of our 21-22 um, mid-year, um, and the expected minimum total available of 4.135 million. Does that include uh, the surplus from the library project? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, on your on uh, now going to um, um, looks like uh, carryover projects. Um, the one um, is the Noble Gold Engineering Feasibility Analysis. Is that the one concerning the storm drain in, in Noble Gulch? Yep. Or is that something different? I'll turn this one back over to Steve. Yeah, that's looking at options. We have the Noble Gulch pipe was failed in 2011, still has 10 year capacity. So it'd be looking at what options there are to increase the flood protection around that pipeline. And this was that, and we talked about it uh, when uh, you did the presentation on the local hazard mitigation sure. plan. Yes, That's correct, Mr. Ryan. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Um, and then under, also uh, under carryovers, um, bike park renovation, um, I wasn't quite sure what that is. Um, so, so the, the bike park, the pump track, uh, you know, was built with, um, oh, the pump track. Okay. Pump track. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking of parking bikes. Um, no, nope, the pump track. That's a, yes. Bike park is a new term for us, isn't it? We don't usually use that. And um, okay, those were my questions. Um, and I'm thinking, it looks like we have four tasks uh, um, that um, staff has asked us to go to do. Uh, so I was thinking of just maybe taking them one by one. The first one is to confirm our budget principles um, as previously presented. Um, well, you know, maybe this would should be the time maybe I should just check in with um, the public and see if anybody um, in the public wishes to make a comment on the staff presentation. Um, and so I'll, I'll take it out to the public. If you would like to speak, uh, raise your hair, your hand on Zoom, um, and um, or you can dial star nine. Um, you'll have three minutes, or you can write an email to us at public comment at ci.capitola.ca.us. Mayor Story, I do not see anyone in the audience raising their hand to speak on this item, and we have not received any emails. Okay, I'll bring it back then and uh, and tick it off uh, with um, a discussion and approval of the budget principles as identified on page six and seven of our agenda packet. Um, any comments or questions about that? Um, and Council Member Peterson. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm that you want a separate motion for each one of these. Like you want a motion first to confirm the budget principles and then we'll move on to well, I, I was thinking that would be the most orderly way to proceed um, is maybe having a motion on uh, each topic area. Um, and, and that way, you know, we can be sure to cover them all um, and, and do so, you know, at, in uh, step by step. You got it. In that case, I will make a motion to confirm our high level, high level budget principles. Before second. Anyone, yeah, okay. We have a motion and a second. Um, that's fine. Um, I did want to, um, I guess, make a um, request or a recommendation on um, the, the topic of public improvement principles and the very last principle where it says ensure maintenance and cleanliness of city facilities, sidewalks, and streets. And um, I'm thinking that we should also include the word safety um, so that it, we ensure maintenance, cleanliness, and safety of city facilities, sidewalks, and streets. Now, now I, I know we do reference um, public safety under um, public service principles, but to me that's a different kind of public safety. Um, and. Um, I would think it's just important that we use safety as a criteria for evaluating, um, you know, any improvements or updates or repairs to our city facilities. So, um, if there's any support for that, um, that sounds good to me. I'll I'll add that to my motion, or if staff wants to add that into the budget principles and. My motion stands with, with the amendment, whatever is most appropriate, but I support that. Thank you, Council Member Peterson. Uh, does the seconder uh, support that uh, amendment to the motion? Yes, Mayor Story. Uh, thank you, Council Member Brooks. Um, so with that, um, let's, are, do any council members wish to make comments on the motion? Seeing none, uh, Chloe, I ask for a roll call vote. I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. 
Aye. And that motion passes unanimously, uh, which would bring us to the second component, which is to confirm the carryover goals. Um, so, I, and I, I guess I'll just ask council members if they feel any particular of the former goals uh, need to be either amended or removed. Can we bring him up? Um, Council Member Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. Um, I would like to make a motion to, to um, well, now you've changed the screen on me, but to uh, approve the uh, carry, thank you, to confirm, to approve the carryover goals um, from the 21-22 year to 22-23 year with the amendment on the item that states explore grant opportunities for public safety, CIP, and Amer environmental policies and outreach programs, CDBG generator, et cetera, because <laughs> there's a lot of et cetera there. I would just like to be clear that we add in um, youth and early education uh, opportunities or grants related to youth and educational opportunities for programming in that particular carryover goal. I'll second that one. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion by council members? Seeing none. Um, would a council member like to take a, uh, um, oh, um, I guess there would be time for a um, roll call vote, Chloe? I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And that motion passes unanimously, which would bring us to um, the third segment of our uh, efforts this evening, and that is to identify the 22-23 um, work plan goals. And we have we have the list on page 10 and 11 of the um, potential um, public improvement and fiscal goals. I mean, if you want, if it would help, maybe, oh, uh, Councilmember Peterson, yeah. Yeah, I think if we're looking for, you know, high, high level overarching goals, everything that's on this slide here, um, based on what it says, is that these projects can be completed with a budget allocation of about 50,000. 50, so I think, um, for one, I would suggest that we move forward with all of these um, on this slide. And then, do you want to move? Do you want me to move on with my thoughts on the key projects, or just stick with what I just said and wait? Well, just for for clarification, um, you referring to the goals that are fifty thousand and less, or yeah, right, right here at the bottom of the slide, it says staff anticipates these projects can be completed with a budget allocation of approximately fifty thousand dollars, and so I think that we should put all of the things on this slide on our work plan goals for the coming year because we're not gonna be digging into exact amounts tonight. Um, and so I think that these are all pretty important. Got it, okay. All second that, sounds good. Okay, um, we have a motion and a second, but I'm gonna call on Council Member Brooks at this time. Great, thank you, Mayor Story. Just for clarification, if we're looking at page 10 um, at the bottom, so we have those 
update special events, and then below it are potential public improvements and fiscal goals. We are not talking about those. We're just talking about the 50,000. That's what the motion is made um, from Council Member Peterson and Council Member Bertrand, correct? Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. It's the goals at the top of page 10 are the fiscal and public service goals. Okay, and the motion um, would then present itself. It, we would see that at our next um, meeting with numbers next to it, Jamie, that then we would decide what we're moving forward with. Um, is that what you're anticipating by us approving the proposed work plan goals for 22-23 from staff? So my expectation would be if, if this is the list coupled with the continued items from last year, um, then when we present the budget, we'll be putting in specific, you know, making sure we have the resources to do these things. And then we're going to be doing each one of these things over the course of the next 14 months. So I don't, I don't think that we would be doing this same hearing again. The next hearing would be looking at the draft budget. Um, and then we're going to be kicking off, for example, the, the ballot measures. I think one of the near term meetings, we would probably come back. We would go into some detail about options for ballot measures and try to get council direction about whether or not we were going to do polling, things like that. So right. each one of these things that they, if you approve them, we would kind of kick off the work plan on them. Okay. And then the next three slides with all of these other ideas that you came, that you've presented, we're going to talk about in this next item that for approval to bring yeah. forward. Got it. And the, okay. the, the real difference between them is, is that those are kind of very much projects that need a lot of money. And these are right. much more processes that take a lot of time. Okay. So, um, council members, if I may just uh, bring some attention towards the bike share program, I was interested in creating a full, um, a full safety program in addition to like a safe streets program. Um, in addition to the bike share program, like an all inclusive. So I don't know if you want me to add that into this because it's pretty specific here, um, or we can just tack it on to the end. Um, so I'm just looking for some input on the best way to proceed. I have a question about that. Yeah, the, go ahead, council member, please. Sure, so if it says the proposed work plan goal is to launch a regional bike share program, it sounds that that's like our participation in something that is larger than just us. Um, but it sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly, Council Member Brooks, that you're talking about something that is just us, is Capitola-wide. Um, so, of course, I, I would definitely support that, but I'm wondering if maybe we should talk about that in the Next as one. a standalone item. Yeah, so that it doesn't interfere okay. with the, the regional aspect of this. That's just my um, my thoughts on it, but I do support the idea of a, a, a overall safe street. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to miss my opportunity <laughs> to bring that up during this particular time as we're talking about these things. So, um, fair. I am fine with the motion that's on the table. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Council Member Bertrand? Yeah, um, Councilwoman Brooks brought up something. Um, I think our captain does a bike safety program with New Brighton. And I don't know how extensive it is, but I think uh, Councilwoman Brooks is talking about something a little more extensive than what they have. And I, I think Captain Sarah Ryan is on. Maybe she could talk about that, or maybe it's not the time. Well, I, I believe that what Councilmember Brooks was talking about was more kind of infrastructure safety. It's, it's, oh, you mean bike? Bike lanes bike and, and stuff. Okay. Right. Whereas um, what the um, you know Chief Daly and Captain Ryan do is more education and training, um, um, and 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 well, education about you know uh, bike um, uh, regulations and laws and stuff. Okay. Well, right they, now we get a lot of our funding from RTC, so yeah. I'll wait on that one. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that that is is that my is my understanding correct, um, Councilmember Brooks and Chief Ballard? Yeah. What I'm asking for is different. It's for the local community, similar to what the county 
that has is a safe streets programs where you see the slow signs and it's a it's a program already in existence but something that we have not adopted in our in our particular yeah. city right okay okay all right um um so with that um we have a motion and a second um and uh, i'll at this time i'll ask for a, a roll call vote I agree. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. And that motion passes unanimously, which will now bring us um, to the hard part. Identify um, you know, key projects uh, for funding. Um, and we can use the list that's on um, now the bottom of page 10, the top of page 11, um, and of course not to preclude any other projects that council members may um, wish to um, have added to the list. So, um, and I, you know, maybe if it's okay with council members we could just maybe go down the list in order and speak to each one um and i believe we're also being asked to um, prioritize the list for the benefit of staff um so um, keep that in mind as well um so let's begin with the wharf uh, rehabilitation project Mayor Story, I have a quick question. Yes. So I, I noticed that some of these, like the local hazard mitigation projects are, um, it's, it's a, a general topic. And so if, if I'm interested in essentially all of the hazard mitigation projects, are we still looking to prioritize each of these projects individually based on funding amount? Or should I just say, I think we should prioritize local hazard mitigation projects and then have staff return to us with the feasibility of funding for each of these. Um, well, Jamie, maybe I'll let you chime in to respond to that question. It wouldn't seem to me that we need to prioritize each separate item under local hazard mitigation, um, but it would be helpful for staff to know where that grouping kind of falls within the list. Sure. So at this stage, you know, really the goal here, from my perspective, from staff's perspective, is to get guidance in preparation of the budget. And so that high level feedback, like, look, hazard mitigation is an important priority and let's take $300,000 that we have allocated and put it in there. If you see one of these projects and you think that's no good, we can't do that, that would be useful to know. <laughs> uh, so we don't spin our wheels and sort of develop it further into the, in the budget. And again, conversely, if you see one of the projects and think that's definitely got to be something that happens, that would be helpful as well. But no, we don't need to go through each individual project. I think at the end of the day, what we're looking for is a motion that says, hey, let's let's do projects X, Y, and Z and, and come back and take a look at them in the budget. And also, I, I mentioned this at the outset, but I do want to remind everybody that, that this, is, this is sort of the minimum available funding. And I do think in the budget, we will be able to um, bring other resources out that can be also used as well. So this isn't the end of the line, if you will. Did that answer your question, Councilmember Peterson? It did, thank you. Uh, with that, I'll call on Councilmember Brooks. Thank you, Mayor Story. So, okay, I'll take a stab at this and try to make it as easy <laughs> as possible. Um, so, uh, I'm in agreement with the wharf rehabilitation program and trying as, you know, because I can't do all the math on where we are with the full budget. So I'd like to see the wharf project fully funded. I think it would be great to see the community center to see how close we can get to 400,000 and what we can get for that amount of money. The local hazard mitigation projects, I'm on board with all of those. Um, what I think we would have to do is start at the lowest end of the, the um, scale um, if we wanted to see all those done um, with that. 
So the minimal city hall maintenance, like you said, Jamie, 100,000 is 100,000. It would be interesting to see what we get, but of course I'm 100% on board with that. Um, the McGregor sidewalk, it is a dream. It is expensive. That is not on the top of my, my list as of today, but if we do can find the funding for that, that would be great. The climate action um, plan projects, I'm um, all on board with the charging stations. I think that we need to touch base with 3CE because I believe we can get funding from them. I'm not interested in the roundabout. The bike pe uh, pedestrian safety projects, again, this is what I was talking about of maybe trying to consolidate the safe streets program that the county does. Um, and then, of course, the Perry Bridge Maintenance Program, I'm on board with that, as well as the tot lot. So that's my general feelings about all those. It'd be great to see you come back with how much we can get if we were to, to ask for all that. I do have some additional asks um, to see where we can find some funding for some additional items. Mayor Story, I don't know if you'd like me to bring those up now or wait till you get everyone's feedback on the um, what's on the screen. I think that it would be good for us to hear it now so that everyone can maybe be thinking of them in context. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know what was on the other screen. Did we approve the PERS funding? That was the, that's what we just approved, right? Or what is this one? That's on this um, list. It is on this list. You, you went down to the um, Peary Park, the last three were on the next slide. Oh, page 11, pardon me. Page. Let me turn the page. Okay, so bike park renovation, we don't, I mean, if it's grant funded, that's amazing. The CalPERS, the 1 million to reach funding target. So if we only have 4.3 million, I've already spent 2.3 on the wharf and another million on the CalPERS Trust, I don't know how likely it is for us to get all of that, Jamie. Um, it would be nice to see some other options and really what the, the plan would look like in the five years, um, especially after we get a report out with Merlon Geyer and how fast we need to move on that for planning. And I can't respond to pavement management because there is no number um, with that. I think we've allocated slurry seals in the past and things um, of that nature, and we have that wonderful spreadsheet that Steve created on what's the worst street and the best streets and all of that. Um, it'd be nice to see that come back to us with the number of, of, um, on how much that would cost us to address those uh, next Larry Steel projects. Steve, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, okay, so I'd also like to see us come, uh, for staff to come back with a cost in relation to continuing implicit bias training. I think council will have to decide on what, how often we want to do that, but I'd like to see that as an ongoing thing, um, you know, every X amount of years. Um, for the CIP projects, I'd like to um, add Ballard's um, the, onto Monterey Avenue as a potential project. It's really dark out there, um, and I've gotten some feedback from constituents. So if you're walking up um, where the park is, Noble Gulch, is that the right name? That's just really dark up there. And Ballard seems to be the best fit instead of putting big giant lights because it shines in people's houses. So those low lights um, would be really nice. I mentioned the safe street program. Um, you know, staff brought up the $600,000 that still remains in the general fund that we've, we set aside for COVID. I'd like for staff to explore that $385,000 as um, reoccurring fund into something more of like a resiliency fund for the next projected years out. Um, you didn't mention how, what ongoing meant for that $385,000. So um, I'd be interested in looking at that as a possibility and changing the language, right? So from COVID to resiliency. Um, and I believe, let me just check my notes. That is what I have for additional items to be added for this evening. Yeah. 
case in council member brooks uh, the resiliency fund um yeah that would be at three hundred and eighty five thousand is that correct not the full six hundred thousand Right. You know, I know when I sat on finance, the fact we've talked about it a little bit um, of continuing that, but, you know, we're doing a little bit better, but we're still experiencing the effects of COVID and employment issues and, and all of these things that we still have unfilled positions. And there's just a lot still going on with our community that it'd be nice to have a little um, reserve, but I don't know what ongoing meant in the presentation. So I'd like to see what that means at our budget hearing. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I'll call on uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I resonate with um, pretty much um, all the things that are already on the list that uh, Councilwoman Brooks spoke about um, in regards to their importance. Um, I did have a question, and mm, I, I'm not sure who can answer it, but what can somebody remind me what the issues with the top lot was? Like, I know the library got their situation, but what happened with the top lot? Jamie, do you want me to answer that since I brought it up at the... So the top lot at the library is original. So the library was rebuilt, but mm -hmm. the, the top lot wasn't updated. And at this time, um, we're seeing a lot of park structures be built that are um, created with the universal de design, meaning all-inclusive for all people of all abilities. And okay. this particular tot lot doesn't really fall into that category. Yeah. So I ideally would like to see it be a, a more inclusive space for people of all and kids of all abilities. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then um, I am definitely on board with that. Um, I also wanted to maybe touch on a couple of other things that are not listed um, in line with the, uh, I guess this would maybe fall under the climate action plan projects. Um, I sit on the um, Commission for the Environment and we're working on a program to outreach to local restaurants um, and make sure that they're using uh, compostable straws, to-go containers, bags, things like that, um, which obviously was a huge thing during um, to-go only times and the pandemic. Um, so we want to make sure that all the businesses are on the same page and that they're informed. And then we want to hopefully budget for some type of enforcement to make sure that um, the, the guidelines are being followed. So that is something that I wanted to put out there and um, then sort of echoing on the, um, let's see, sorry. Uh, I guess just the street, um, oh, that's under the same thing, but the <laughs> bike and pedestrian safety. Um, I, I think I like the idea um, on the corner of Monterey. I also um, wouldn't mind looking into a better sort of um, maybe a signal at the crosswalk um, across Stockton Ave into Esplanade. Um, it does get a little hairy with uh, pedestrians and tourists and people not paying attention and not knowing what's going on. It can be a little cumbersome um, crossing there. So um, also I think maybe there's been some issues with the light up crosswalk crossing cliff as well. So I'm not sure if that has been addressed or looked at. Um, but things like that, I um, I think could be an ongoing thing, but I'd like to add that if you can. Thank you so much. Council Member Bertrand. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Okay, just wanna make sure I'm not on mute again. <laughs> yeah, I just, um, I appreciate the discussion that we've had so far and um, my question is about the wharf rehabilitation project. Um, my concern obviously is, as we all share, uh, how much um, we need to do to ensure the safety of this. So, and long-term viability uh, due to waves, actions, and such like this. So is this 2.3, I don't think, because I asked a question about this last time. This is not meant to do the raising of the wharf. This is just to complete the width and um, maybe the wharf, um, you know, the floating dock and stuff like that. I just want to get a sense of what's, what this means. 
That's correct. This is the project that we went over last meeting. It doesn't include raising the wharf, but it does include all the resiliency improvements, and those improvements can be modified in the future to raise up uh, the level of the wharf with the fiberglass pilings um, can be added to to raise the wharf down the road. Okay, so we don't have the money to do that, um, basically. So um, I'm really into the idea of the uh, charging stations. As many of you know, we've received some emails about availability of charging stations, and, and this is the future, and we do have a climate action requirement from the state, so this will help us meet that. Um, now, Jamie, I need your help on this, or maybe um, Katie, um, if she's on, could help me on this. So in terms of climate action plan projects, uh, we've done, I think, two studies so far dealing with um, the hazards, um, climate action, mitigation issues that we might possibly need to take care of. But one thing that concerns me is I don't think we've pressed, um, not pressed, I'll pass this information on to the general public. Um, I may be wrong. Um, we might have mentioned in our newsletters that we've done this, but so what I'd like to add and you know maybe come back to us on how this would work is some way to do uh, public education on what we already know because of the projects that we paid for and funded rather uh, to give us reports. Um, I am concerned that people may not be thinking adequately of the issues in this town. Uh, we're basically at sea level, and I think they should know of these issues going forward. So I'd love for some guidance on that, Jamie. If we could add that to this, that would be great. So just as a point of clarification, you mentioned the Climate Action Plan. It sounds like you might be talking about the LHMP, the hazard mitigation plan that talks about sea level rise and the threats from. Right. No, I mentioned uh, we have items under climate action plan projects, and you're right. We have the mitigate uh, the studies. I think we've done two, and we've identified you know zones that are going to be flooded, and we've put timelines on that and such like that. So my concern is that does the public really know about these things and. You know, they're planning maybe things for their homes or they want to know, um, you know, how this might affect them moving forward. Um, so I think the public should know. That's my, my issue here. And I think that um, having some way to get this information out, which we've already hmm, detailed through our studies, is important. So I just need some guidance there. I can comment on that. Briefly, um, so AMBAG is prepared to give an update on the climate action plan, but they asked, uh, they recently did an inventory and we got the analysis, but however, the, the way in which the accounting is done for greenhouse gas emissions and climate um, to, to gauge where we are in our goal setting, it's being re-changing um, the actual formulas and how it's calculated to be more true to um, to match consumption. So they had asked, I think I got the report back in December, however, they're, they're updating numbers and we're hoping to bring that to you this summer. Okay, so that's greenhouse gas reduction, but I'm also thinking about, you know, if the sea level is gonna rise over a certain rate over the next couple of years, what that means to the Esplanade area and the buildings and such that live there, um, all those along Riverview are going to be affected. Um, maybe their docks are going to, maybe we'll have to do some armoring or redoing the dock areas so that they don't get completely lost. That's sort of what I'm talking about, Kitty. I think that would also be built into that bluff and cliff drive study that's proposed under these projects for okay. hazard mitigation. Okay, so Katie, I, I'll take it from you. I'll take your word that that could be a way for us to get the information out to our uh, city residents. Would, would you agree with that? Yes, it would definitely be combined in that effort. Okay, thanks. Because uh, I, I want the residents to know about these things, you know, if they have plans for their homes, if I, I think it's important for them to have the information and make up their minds on various things they may want to do in the future. Thank you. I'll also note that 
the, the work plan uh, that the council has just sort of approved for next year does include enhanced community outreach. And there's a number of efforts like this that can, will fall under that overall rubric. Yeah, I was going to wait until you brought that forward before I asked questions. But if that's being included, I highly commend that on your part. Council Member Peterson. All right, thank you. All right, I have uh, a couple uh, thoughts on what's been presented to us and, and also ways that I think we might be able to consolidate some of the recommendations that other council members have already brought forward. Um, my priorities in looking what we have in front of us would be uh, to set aside 400000 for the community center, uh, not knowing what the um, complete, you know, the, given the significant facility needs, I think a good start would be the 400000 to at least do some work on it. Uh, I'd also like to see allocation for the 50000 for studying city hall options. Um, staff can do an RFP with some consultants if it looks like 50000 isn't going to be an option for, um, you know, some consultants to talk to us about our options, then maybe council can reconsider. Um, I'd like to see the $50,000 go towards the Bluff and Cliff Drive study. I think that's really important. It's been eroding for a long time, and it's getting worse and worse and worse now. And so I think that's an important thing for us to consider, uh, both from an environmental and a safety standpoint. Um, the... Um, uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser mentioned some uh, crosswalk uh, safety issues, and um, Council Member Brooks had mentioned some ballards, and I think both of those uh, could potentially get some funding from the $50,000 recommendation for, <coughs> excuse me, bike and pedestrian safety, which I think might have been on the next slide, um, or at least it was in the packet. Yeah, there we go, bike and pedestrian safety projects. Um, so those are the kind of smaller allocations, but now I'm, I'm considering that it might be um, important for us to throw some larger chunks of money towards projects, even if we can't fully fund them. And so one of them would be $500,000 to go towards the wharf. Um, the roundabout on Bay Avenue, it says it's a $1.5 million project, but it's already on the RTC's, um, oh God, what's it called? We're voting on it in like two days. Act, uh, transportation plan. Step. Uh, what's that? I, I, I was just thinking of one of the, pro, um, the funding sources, sorry. Yeah, no, not the funding source. It's just, it's on the plan for our yeah. county's transportation project. And if I remember correctly, 500,000 of that's already constrained funding. And so there's only a million in funding that's unconstrained. So if we could put another $500,000 towards it, then we're only missing another $500,000 to get it done. And that's a project that we've been talking about for a really long time, that intersection's a nightmare. So I think it'd be worth uh, putting towards that. Um, and then 500,000 towards our CalPERS trust. So even if we can't reach the full funding target, putting some money towards it would be great. Uh, if I did my math correctly, that brings us to 2.17 million of the, what was it? Two point seven fund balance, something something along those lines. Um, and then Council Member Brooks had mentioned moving 385000 from the COVID to a uh, resiliency fund. And uh, my recommend, recommendation of that would be to move it into our emergency reserves. We already have 10% of our general fund in emergency reserves. And I don't think that we necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong, staff, I don't think we have to change the percentage that we want to keep in there in order for us to just move money in there. Um, so if that's the case, then I think it would be wise of us uh, to Councilwoman Brooks' suggestion to move $385,000 into that emergency reserve, knowing that then we can use it however we need uh, for resiliency or what have you without drawing below that 10% of reserve um, that, that we have um, as a mandate for keeping money in there. So that was a lot, just did all that math real fast. I'm hoping, uh, yeah, I, I think that's all I have to say about that. Just uh, for clarification, <coughs> Councilmember Peterson, uh, so you were recommending um, allocating 500,000 to the um, roundabout, the Bay Avenue roundabout in the next fiscal year? 
Did I hear that right? That's correct. Okay. Just and, and for, for, sorry, forgive me. When I was doing my math, I couldn't remember where I had thrown in another 20,000, and it was the charging stations for two new charging stations. Ah, okay. I'll go for the charging stations. Thank you. Yeah, and also to clarify, the uh, RTC is contributing 500,000 to the roundabout. No, they're not. They're not contributing to it. I don't remember what the funding source is, but it's on our uh, project list for um, what is this thing called? I can't believe I'm not remembering what this is called right now because we're voting on it in like two days, or we're yep. working on it in like two days. So it's driving me crazy. Regional transportation plan. The transportation plan. Yeah, the 20, 2045 regional transportation plan uh, project list, that roundabout is already on there. $500,000 of it is constrained. Uh, a million of it is unconstrained. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, can I clarify something? Yeah. Point? So, Council Member Peterson, the Five hundred thousand dollars that's constrained, that is not funding that has been allocated or identified as that. When we put those projects together, we try to identify how much money we think we can come up with with um, and so if you're put five hundred thousand dollars toward it today, that would be the five hundred thousand dollars that is constrained. Oh, it's interesting. We, it's, so it's not available yet, but we think we can come up with that and the part that we can't come up with is the remainder. So that's oh. what that means in that project, not yeah. already identified. Thank you. That's really interesting. Well, in that case, I stand by it because then at least we can say that that 500,000 that's constrained is also identified. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Um, Council Member Bertrand, did you want to uh, go through your list? Um, basically, you know, I just talk about things that I felt were pretty important. But um, Councilwoman Brooks brought up ballots on Monterey. And I just want to, you know, I sort of think I know what she means because I've had the same issue and complaints from other people. But I just want to get an idea of what she meant. Um, Houston brought it up, too. Um, I walk down Monterey Street a lot at night, so I just want to make sure I understand what she meant. Yeah. I'm sorry, my my computer went up. To ask that question again, Councilmember no, Bertrand. No problem. So um, I just want to understand what you meant about Monterey Ballards, um, and I think I know what you mean because I walk that street a lot at night, uh, yeah. coming home from the gym and such. So I just want the the, the council to be clear about what you mean. Sure. So this actually um, was an issue that was brought to me in 2018. So when I first came onto council. Um, from several constituents who had brought up the issue of their concern of safety as they were walking their uh, walking with their families at night or walking their dogs up Monterey Avenue, so from um, Noble Gulch Park up um, the street towards New Brighton. Um, on the left-hand side, it was really dark on that sidewalk. And what actually came about was that we could possibly partner with PG&E because that was their area and that they could provide lighting. Well going back and forth a year and a half into it, pg e then said, actually, that's not ours, that's the city's. Um, mm -hmm. And so I've had communication with um, the constituents then to say, okay, well, you know, we can't really build up because the lights would go into people's houses. You know, we were, we were exploring some ideas and I talked to staff about what some ideas would be and what the general cost would be. And what we found out was Bellers, those low little lights could be installed right where that, that sidewalk pathway by the park is right now um, for not much. I think it was, gosh, Steve, if you're, I can't see your, see where you are, but if you had that general, do you remember? It's in the 10000 maximum $10,000. Yeah, $10,000. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, staff suggested that I bring this back to all of you three years later. <laughs> <laughs> for approval. So here I am asking for $10,000 to light up the street for safety um, measures. So that's what I'm asking this evening. Thank you. Well, I, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because um, <laughs> it is a safety measure. Um, what happens is when the cars are coming down Monterey after they cross at the top of the hill, 
you you basically have headlights glaring at you, so you can't see anything. That's one of them. And that is a rather dark walkway that I think a lot of people feel somewhat um, not safe walking up. So I'm glad you brought that up. I know people have actually fallen off because they couldn't see where they were going. Okay. Um, yeah, Council Member Bertrand, did you have comments on uh, any of the other um, public improvement uh, goals? Um, generally, I you know I agree with everyone. I think it was a pretty good list that staff put together. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, see some attention given to communicating to the public about the issues that are going to be um, before them with climate rise. Um, and so that's going to be a, uh, dealt with, uh, as Katie mentioned, in one of the studies. So that was one of them. And um, we are going to have more money for the electric charging stations, which I think um, is going to make a lot of people happy. Um, you've all gotten emails about people who find it's hard to get some of these stations. Um, and the thing that uh, Councilwoman Brooks brought up, I think we got an email from a, um, a vendor about um, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, but facilities and parks that are more accessible to all sorts of different people, no matter what their circumstances. So you know that that's a good thing. I totally, you know, I read that thing. I thought it was a good thing. So, you know, that was an addition. So, all in all, I, I have no problems with things. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Councilmember Peterson, did you um, have your hand up again? Or? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify because I, I had mentioned the um, Vice Mayor Kaiser's crosswalk and uh, Councilmember Brooks Ballard going under the kind of bucket of these bike and pedestrian safety projects and based on the funding that uh, Steve just rec uh, suggested it might cost, it sounds like those two might still fit in there. So I'm just wondering if Vice Mayor Kaiser and Councilwoman Brooks, for the sake of kind of keeping our uh, key projects within as much as possible within what's already here on the screen for the sake of just keeping it easy for everyone, um, would be willing to um, consider their projects as part of these bike and pedestrian safety projects. Yeah. Oh. I I would note that we we uh, you, you'll know that that item just says fifty thousand plus. Um. So, right. if there's some specific things, you may want to put more than fifty k into it. Um, considering the baller lighting, Council Member Brooks is talking about, I think it was, you know, a little bit under 10, light, lit crosswalks, depending on the option, they, they can, they can run a bit of money. And then there's some other ideas on Park Avenue that have come up this evening. So you may want to bump that item a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy to, to bump that up to, you know, a hundred thousand, if, if that's more appropriate for staff to be able to play with the numbers and bring it back to us um, as long as uh, Councilwoman Brooks and, and Vice Mayor Kaiser are okay with, you know, just, I'm just trying to keep things within the buckets um, that we already are looking at when possible um, in order for the sake of, of ease of determining what we're actually spending money on and where. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer your question. Councilmember Peterson, what I'm imagining is staff is going to bring back all of these things in each general principle and have a list for us, and then there's going to be X amount of money. So however they need to play it out, I'm fine with that, um, as long as it's the projects that I identified are included with X amount next to them, and then we can decide from there what needs to stay and what needs to go. Is that what how you envisioned it, Jamie? It is, but I'll, you and Councilmember Peterson have not identified the same list. So, you know, we do we no, need to speak to circle that square. For right now, we're just referring to the bike and pedestrian safety oh. projects. And I think if I'm understanding correctly, what I'm saying is let's use that as the priority that we will vote on tonight as giving key funding to as a project for key funding. And then when staff comes back, uh, Council, Councilwoman Brooks will expect to see the money for her Ballards under bike and pedestrian safety projects and Vice Mayor Kaiser would expect to see what kind of funding is available for her crosswalk and 
et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. If I if I understand, I could be I could be misunderstanding as well, but that was my thought. Yeah, my only thing would be I just don't want our points to get lost if they're not being included separately or something. That would be my only take on it. Jimmy, were you still looking for a prioritized list at this stage? Well, I think that the funding allocation determines the priority. <laughs> so if a project doesn't get funded, it's not going to be, be a priority for us to begin working on at this stage. So if we can, if council is going to allocate around 3 million, 3.4 million, it should go to the projects that are the highest priority. So, yeah, so you do need us to identify priorities. Because I have, you know, um, I don't know that I've necessarily heard these listed in order of priority, but maybe they have been. Uh, so if, is that the way uh, council members um, presented them in order of priority so that Jamie can note them that way? Um, yeah, uh, council member Brooks. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Story. So Jamie, we're just doing this a little bit differently this time around. Um, so I, I think the way I answered the question first was going down the list was the direction that was given to us was to go down the list first and, and say, you know, these are the things we wanted to include to have that discussion the next time. And I heard council member Peterson several times be really clear with what we were expecting. So I think what I, and I, and I'll say it this way is that everything we you've suggested here, we need to see it on paper with the numbers next to them at the next meeting at the budget hearing with these additional items that council member Kaiser, Peterson, myself, anyone else has brought up. And then we could decide then how we're going to stay within that 4.3 million with with the the projects i mean i think that's what i've heard several times but now you're asking us to prioritize and i thought we're going to wait for that at the next budget meeting to prioritize so, you know, this is your this is your meeting but my recommendation is is to identify the project that you want to see funded in the budget and it's fine to make them a little bit more broad and say it's a hundred thousand for bike head safety and let's include enough you know staff flesh out the ideas that you've heard discussed here but, but there's not enough funding to do everything on the list. So whether it's a question of identifying, you know, the projects that you don't want to move forward with at this time, or as council member Peterson said, I'd like to put 400 K into the community center, 50 K into the city hall study all the way through that list. Either way. Okay. That's yeah. direction. I apologize. I was not ready to put numbers next to projects. I thought we were just creating high level goals tonight. So um, I appreciate council member Peterson bringing up numbers, but I didn't write them down. So um, council member Peter, I feel like I have to start all over to be completely honest. So I'm sorry, council members. Um, but if council member Peterson is so inclined to say those numbers again, and if staff can leave those projects, I'll pull up the paper and we'll start writing stuff down or, um, cause I think that's what you're asking us now. That would be helpful because then, then then we have the feedback on what are the projects that we're going to be putting into the budget or fleshing out more details um, for the next stage. Mayor Story, um, yeah. yeah. Council Member Brooks, why don't you go back and see if you could, uh, you know, put some numbers to your particular project. And... Oh, boy. Can Council Member Peterson repeat her items and maybe staff, I mean, I think we're being asked something differently now. So Mayor, excuse me for not being prepared. Mayor, could I jump in? Um, yeah, one, hold on just a minute, um, Council Member Bertrand. Let's, um, um, Council Member Peterson, why don't you go ahead and go through your list again for the benefit of Council Member Brooks? And... Yeah, okay. Um, if we could. For the sake of, of, of everyone seeing what I'm talking about, I believe we need to go back one slide to the beginning of the... Yep, thank you. Um, so I was recommending 500,000 to go towards the wharf project. 
it won't be fully funded, but as mentioned, project can be scaled to match budget allocation. And I think if the, we can continue to put money towards it, that's good. Um, the community center was 400,000. It said addressing near-term needs was 150 to 400. I think it's good to start on the higher end of our lower estimates, so to speak. Um, I'm fine with the tot lot. I didn't include that last time, but I'm fine with the tot lot. That's 150. And then 50,000 for studying the city hall options. 50,000 for the bluff and cliff drive study. If we could go to the next slide. 100,000 for the minimal city hall maintenance in the meantime, while we're determining what's gonna happen with city hall five, 10 years from now, however long. Uh, 20,000 for two charging stations. 500,000 towards the roundabout project on Bay and Cap Avenue. Uh, we're now up to 100,000 for the bike and pedestrian safety project. And 500,000 towards our CalPERS trust. So I think that brought me up to what, 2.5, we added some, so 2.6, 2.5. I had that, I think at 2.7, but don't quote me okay. on that one. Yeah. And our oh, budget was four point yeah. Sorry, plus the plus the three eighty five um, that Councilwoman Brooks had asked to be set aside uh, for a resiliency fund of some sort. I I had suggested the emergency reserve, but I'm happy to put it you know wherever council council deems it necessary. So those are those are my priorities for getting things done. Um, so anything I didn't list, I wouldn't consider my personal budget priorities. And if it turns out that we have additional funding, because I only suggested 2.7 million, um, and I know that there's more than that to be spent, but those are my priorities um, that I would like to see council return, or I'm, I'm sorry, staff return to council in the budget. Okay. Um, Councilmember Brooks, are you um, prepared to go through your list of numbers now, or do you want me to come back to you? Sure. I'll just, um, if I could just ask Councilmember Peterson um, just a high level question. <laughs> Knowing that there was some just extra funding available, was there any reasons that you um, didn't do like Perry Park or Perry Park Bridge or any of those kind of? The, um, or the Stockton Bridge program? Any? Um, because these are just the ones that I'm prioritizing right now. I know other council members are going to have other uh, suggestions for what they want prioritized. And I did hear, I think you and, and I believe it was Council Member Bertrand mentioned those. So I imagine they probably will end up in our priority list if we end up with kind of a merged, merging of all of our priorities. Um, but as um, City Manager Goldstein mentioned we just don't have the funds for every single project, and so I was choosing the ones that I would prioritize funding for. Okay, thank you. Um, Mayor Story, to answer your question, I just need a minute. Okay, um, I'll, then I'll turn to uh, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, I, I like the old way of presenting where there's a spreadsheet and we could actually you know, see what each one is doing so we get a rough idea. Um, but let's go back to the top. I wasn't prepared for this in this sense also. Um, is this the top one? The top one had the uh, wharf on it, I think. Top page? Yeah. So I want to full, fully fund that. I think that the wharf is a major thing in capital. It's critical in many different ways. and. Um, once we get that work done, it's going to be sort of like 
getting our library done. <laughs> Community center, I think, is is definitely a need. That's another center part of our community for lots of things that mean tons of things to the public. So 400,000 for that. Um, local mitigation, you know, I, I'm actually for all of these things because they are issues that potentially could bite us. And if we don't deal with them now, so in terms of funding, I'll go 50,000 for city hall, stock and bridge reinforcement. Um, I think at this point we could go for the low end. So let's say 400,000 love drive study. Um, I have no clue how much money we need to do a study. And I do think we need to get out to the public, but we've already done in the past. So I'll stick with staff recommendations of 50. Hopefully that does it. Noble Gulch engineering. I'll stick with 50. That actually is a major thing and flooded the mobile home park. Noble Gulch, um, you know, so that's something we need to do with. Let's get to the next page, please. Maintenance, city hall maintenance. Um, I hope we can do it for 50,000. I'll go for that. Um, McGregor, I'll pass on that. Climate action charging stations, I've heard 20. I'll go for 20, roundabout. Oh. Where are we at on that? What did um, Peterson say on that? 500,000. Okay, I'll say 500,000 bike safety projects. Uh, Brooke put, uh, Brooke's put in for that. Um, I'll probably pair it hers. Um, I'll stick with 50 and let us take those up. Perry Park Bridge maintenance. Um, I'm not sure what we need to do there except to replace a lot of the boarding. Um, can we stop here for a minute? Steve, would you tell us what the Perry Park Bridge maintenance is? I know a lot of wood needs to be replaced. That's about it. Maybe some painting. So as you know, we did some structural repairs, uh, the wharf of the bridge, I'm sorry. Um, that, that was the foundation on basis. I yeah. think there's some continued um, uh, structural repairs that aren't critical right now, but we need to get ahead of rather than doing it on an emergency hey, basis. I think we have to put and, uh, that's what we'd like to take. Okay, well. No. Jamie, you're not muted. What? Can I Okay, um, yeah, I'll take Steve's word. If it's if it's something that's structural that might bite us in the future, I'll go with this estimate of 100,000. And um, you know, we already granted allocation for purse fund. I'll I'll go for the million. I think it's very critical that we provide for the um, the funding of PERS, um, You know, our employees' retirement, et cetera. And Often, if we can't pay for it, then we have to take a bond and actually pay more for it to retire the bond. So those are the ones I feel are high priority. Jamie, what did that get us to on that? So I just called Jim and he's putting up a spreadsheet showing everyone total. Thank you very much. This is extremely helpful. Yeah, because I think we're going to need to. Uh, Kristen's total, I think, came out to about 2.75. Uh, I'm afraid you went over though, <laughs> but, but I'll have to see it. Jim's putting it in right now. Okay. Did you get the last item, Jim, when I called and bothered you? I think Jacques suggested a million dollars for the purse trust. Yep. That's correct. I, I will get that right now. For some, I think I have yeah, money yeah. for the purse trust. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to support the big ticket items that the city has responsibilities for the public and also for our employees. I'll get rid of this PowerPoint now. Who's ever dog that is reminds me my Reggie is no longer here. It's my dog. It's your dog. Oh. She wants to walk already. <laughs> this is not working today. Um, well, Jim, um, why don't you continue to work on that and 
I'll, um, I'll see if Council Member Brooks is. I'm like calculating everything as we. I know you. I <laughs> we... see you there with your calculator. <laughs> Just throw them out, and you know, Jim will put them up there, and we'll calculate. Yeah, no, it. absolutely. I think. Um, Thanks, Jim. If if anything, I I agree with Councilmember Peterson and what Councilmember Bertrand is presenting. It's pretty much like we're going the low end of all of the recommendations. I guess what I would just add is that whatever's left over, so whatever X is at the not end. <laughs> Jim, we can hear you. Jim, thanks. <laughs> um, I, I would like to see it go towards the wharf project. So in a perfect world, if there's anything left, which there probably won't be, I'd love to see an increase to the wharf rehabilitation project. Um, so as Jim, yeah, community center, 400, beautiful, city hall, 500, great. Stockton Bridge, I think we need to bring that back to 350, not 400. That was the low end of that. Bluff Cliff Drive, 50. 50 for Noble Gulch. 100 for the City Hall. Noah McGregor. Charging Stations, 20. Bike Pedestrian Safety Projects, 100. Hot Lot, 150. CalPERS, 500K. The resilience fund that using that 385 on that. The one thing that I didn't see here, and this might not be much, um, and we can bring it next to the budget hearing, is the implicit bias training. I think we have a pot of money called something for trainings, um, so we might not even need to go there um, tonight because that's such a small amount. So that should leave us about. 50 more million dollars to spend, right, folks? 50 million more? No? Okay. So, Not quite. I think, I think you outpaced Jim's data. Okay, entry. Jim, you want me to go again? Well, I Jim, think, I'll go up. I think that you, you were trying to fully fund the wharf. Is that correct? Well, no. I'll stick with the 500 just for, for continuity across the board. Okay. Oh, I see what Jim's doing. I was reading. Okay. Tot lot. Great. Um, do, 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 do. Community center, 400. City hall options, 50. Stockton bridge, 350. Bluff, 50. Noble Gulch, 50. City Hall, 100. Charging Stations, 20. Bike Pedestrian Safety Projects, 100. Hot Lot, 150. Helpers, 500. Resilience Fund, 385. And that's ongoing, right? Did I miss anything? So it looks like your total is about 2.6. There's some amazing formulas you got going on, Jim. Hey, Jim, do you think you could bump the font, the zoom, lower right corner, just hit that plus button a couple times? Does that help, folks? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, I'm um, oh, did you finish your list, Council Member? Yeah, and, and, and I think that's, and so if we're still kind of staying with the same premise, help me, Mayor Story, that, that at our next meeting, whatever's left over, we could talk about these kind of other projects that we didn't fund, right? And so maybe upping the wharf at a later time, we just don't know what the exact numbers would be. Is that, that will happen at our budget hearings? This is just yeah, giving staff something to work with? Right. I Timmy, I think that this would be a good starting point and we could come back. Um, and, you know, if we need to whittle some more or add more um, as the situation may be, we still need to get to a majority approval, so on uh, some of these items. So, 
Yeah, a couple a couple things. Um, absolutely, we can follow the process that you just outlined. If this is if this is where we want to allocate it right now, we do have a little bit of a deadline coming up on the wharf. Um, and Steve, you can remind us. You're hoping to to be able to bid a project, which know you need to know what project you're bidding by when. Sorry, you caught me stretching my legs. Um, you know, our goal is to try and start construction probably in October, which means we need to probably be going to bid potentially before the budget is set. Um, at, at this point, we probably want to go to bid in May at the latest and award a contract in July before our recess so that we could begin in October. It's going to take a long time for the contractor to gear up with that. And how long do you need to prepare the bid documents? About six weeks, I'd estimate at this time. Okay, so your goal would be to know what project we're bidding coming up in April. That would be good. So that is one, while we could put more money into the wharf project, um, and we don't have to bid on the schedule if we know what we're bidding, um, that certainly is gonna help. Hey, um, I want to now um, bring this back to uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser and see if she wants to um, put in her numbers into the spreadsheet. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I am personally uh, leaning towards more of the full funding of the wharf. So if that's the 2.3, then that's fine. Um, the community center, um, I'd be interested actually in just sort of seeing what the lower end of that would get us. Um, I don't know the specific needs of the community center at this time. Um, so getting a bit, little bit more information on that. Um, I am for the tot lots and then um, city hall. Yes, the 50 um, Stockton Bridge, I would say stick with the lower end, so that, yeah, so the 350, uh, the Bluff 50, Noble Gulch 50, I'm trying to like scroll like it's my screen, <laughs> then, sorry, Jim, thanks, uh, where did we go? Uh, oh, didn't we already do a city hall? There's a city hall study trying to figure out what the long-term plan is for city hall. And then there's kind of the band-aid, the lipstick on the peg. Okay. Let's uh, do that <laughs> band-aid for the hundred thousand. And then, um, yeah, the McGregor will have to pass for me. Charging stations, the 20,000 for both. Um, I'll skip on the roundabout. Bike and pedestrian safety, I'd like a hundred thousand. Um, Piri Bridge, it's not super up there for me, um, but uh, if we need to allocate, I can do that. I guess because I skipped some of the other ones. Um, bike park renovation, no. Um, Calpers, I would go with the five hundred personally. Um, Oh, and then yeah, the I would like to. Was that hundred thousand just added in after the last the tonight's comment? Is that what that was for? On the Park Ave traffic calming. I'm not sure. You're talking about the bike and pedestrian safety project. This last line under pavement management is a oh. Park Ave traffic calming bike lane for a hundred thousand but nobody's sorry that was, sorry that was my notes earlier before i put this on the screen i'll get rid of that because we've combined them now with bike and pedestrians oh okay um great and then yeah the 385 um resilience reserve or however we want to coin that so it's just a little bit of a reminder my my our minimum available funding at this point we think is 4.13 mm -hmm. i suspect that there will be more if we were to aim for a $750,000 fund um, balance, that would be 3.4 million total. 
I think we could, if we're going to be setting the 385 aside as a resiliency fund, I think we could go back to a $500,000 fund balance. It would take us to about 3.65 available to allocate. If, wait, help me out, Jim. I'm double counting this resiliency. 3.6. You were close. 3.64, basically. I have it on the screen. Okay. So we could go to 3.6 in spending if we take the 385, put it in reserves, and then go for a 500K fund balance. Yes. Okay. So I think, I think Councilmember Kaiser, I think you're a little over. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> for but, sure. I'll just say it's winning the day. <laughs> I wasn't like going for exact. I was kind of prioritizing based on my ideals. I I I do want to put it out there that to me the wharf only because of the the budgeting and the permitting and all of that stuff that weighs heavy for me. So I would kind of want to put more of my money <clears> there, and I'm willing to like from elsewhere if that can take priority, personally. Okay. Um, so, looks like um, the council members have concluded their numbers. I, I guess I'll go through and add mine at this I time. Trim later. <laughs> uh, what's that, council member Bertrand? Well, I was wondering, uh, I was thinking about trimming, so um, I don't know if it's good time to do that now or because you do have to do yours <laughs> yeah i, I have yeah. Some that i think can bring us all on the same page but i think i'd like to see uh mayor story's comments first yeah thank you yeah let me throw mine up there then we can um see where we need to trim um so my one my thoughts about the war um, um i think that we need to uh, complete that full project and uh, proceed with it um you know because it, it was based upon, um, you know, a, a promise through this uh, Measure F, um, and I think that we should follow through and complete it as expeditiously as possible. Um, now, you know, with that said, recognizing if there's availability of uh, uh, borrowing some of the um, money up front and using future uh, Measure F sales tax to pay for it, um, could certainly be um, a feasible approach. Um, so, hold on, let me. Um, the community center, um, you know, at this point, I think I would like to see the list of, of, of the work that needs to be done. Um, and, um, and, and, and also, I'd like to see where the um, school district is. Um, with the long-term lease, and so uh, until that point, I, I think I would like to keep that at 150 for now. Um, the top lot, um, since we have some library surplus that could maybe allocated to that, and potentially, um, um, and, and I think that's a good point that Councilman Davis Brooks has made about it. Uh, I'm willing to commit 150 for that. Um, on the local hazard mitigation project, um, I'm in agreement with um, the list there, except for, again, the Stockton Bridge reinforcement project. Again, I'm, I guess, unclear of the engineering and design work um, that, you know, supports what that project is and how much it may cost. And so I would like to maybe just see, you know, what, maybe 50000 for that, um, you know, um, design engineering work. Um, but that, that hasn't happened yet, has it, Daniel? I'll, uh, I'll speak in here. We did the feasibility study that identified options for dealing with the Stockton Avenue Bridge. We have not done any engineering. And as you can imagine, there's going to be quite a bit of permitting required to do anything on the bridge, too. So, Right. Okay. Well, I just I just think that you know maybe we should focus on more focused attention on um, um, narrowing in on what that 
what project we want it to be. Um, and so, um, and that's why I hate constraining that much money when we're so far out on a project when we have more immediate needs. But with that said, uh, the city hall maintenance, um, 100,000 um, on that. Um, the McGregor sidewalk, uh, I'm in agreement. I think that's um, too, too big, big of a cost and, and not as urgent at this time. So I think we can uh, skip that. Um, we seem to be in unanimous agreement on that. Um, you know, the charging station, um, but that's not very much money, but it seems to me that that should be funded through uh, either grants or uh, um, or we should be encouraging um, private businesses to set up charging stations in their lot. I don't know, you know, at Scott Valley, they just put in uh, a number of, uh, of um, you know, the Tesla uh, um, high, high, high charge stations. Uh, in the King's Plaza Shopping Center. Um, and um, to me, that, that may be more appropriate way to go, but if we could get grant money to fund our expense, um, that could maybe work. So um, now on the roundabout, um, I, don't, I don't think we should constrain money on that project this year. And it's not because I don't support it. I, I support the roundabout, but I just don't see it um, uh, coming to fruition for multiple years because it still needs PG&E to do the undergrounding of the utility. And until that happens, you know, I don't, I don't see um, um, us really moving forward with that and therefore kind of tying up money for long periods of time when we have other needs. Uh, just my thoughts. Um, the bike pedestrian safety, um, 100,000 for that. I'm all I'm all in on that. Um, and um, let's see, to PERS, uh, 500,000. Um, and uh, I think that. Of oh, the um, and the resiliency fund uh, for 385, um, I think um, I support that. I know that's going to take me over, but um, I, um, we can. And but one thought about that is, I wouldn't recommend putting that into the emergency reserve um, because I'm not sure that that's the kind of resiliency. Um, that we um, want to try to address. Uh, I just think it would be hard to pull it out of the, an emergency reserve. Um, and I'm not sure if that was, you know, the intention of this type of fund. But um, so those are my thoughts on the list. Um, are, are they, did I miss anything, uh, Jamie? I just did notice uh, a, a little typo, and it wasn't on your side, Jim. I think that you forgot a zero on the tot lot item on council member stories. Oh, yeah, and I should uh, the, the the Perry Park Bridge. I, I do. Um, is, is that that's that? There's no no numbers put in there. I, I don't think we've heard anybody put that in as a priority at this stage. Okay. Well, um, I would like to maybe footnote that particular project um, and come back to it if we should. Um, you know, have additional funding, but uh, nothing at this point since I'm already over. One thing I was going to say on the um, your story on the resiliency fund is if um, it might make more sense to use the contingency reserve. I think we have a little more flexibility with the contingency reserve. Emergencies 
in my mind, I'd have to go back and read it, but an emergency in my mind is, you know, a tsunami, an earthquake, a fire, something along those, where contingency is more flexible, kind of evening out the ebbs and flows of revenues and expenditures. Yeah. I would still feel more comfortable just leaving it at the kind of, um, you know, constrained fund balance. Um, I think it would certainly be easier for the council members to act uh, than being put into either one of our reserves, um, which, which are more um, ordinance driven um, or principle driven. So, um, so those those are my thoughts at this point and numbers. Um, and um, now, um, Jimmy, are you wanting us to go through and? It would be helpful to have a unified, you know, a motion uh, to do something that totals up to somewhere in the range of between three, five and three, seven, if the council can get there. Uh, otherwise we can take this and, and continue the conversation. But I do think the key here, the biggest one is making a decision on the war because that will start to impact the project timelines if we right. want to push that out. Mayor Story, I'm prepared to make a motion. Oh, okay. Um, go ahead, Council Member. I, I wanted to trim some of my estimates. Well, let, let's, hear, let's hear Council Member Peterson's motion. And, yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, Jacques, just because I'm I'm going to be changing some of my numbers and including some of other people's numbers, and I think uh, hopefully this will bring us to a you know like a united um, agreement for or, or, okay. or anyway. So, um, Jim, if well, you wouldn't Jim, mind, yeah, yeah, Jim, if you wouldn't mind putting this as like a separate, um, you know, not not necessarily changing mine from what I initially suggested, but as its own um, column. So. Here's what here's what my motion is to oh yeah no keep that no down down with all of these like itemized things we've been doing yeah okay perfect okay my motion is to put 1.5 million towards the wharf 150 thousand towards the community center 150 thousand for the tot lot. 50,000 for the city hall options. 350 for the Stockton Bridge reinforcement project. 50 for Noble Gulch. Is that what that is? No, I'm sorry. Uh, 50 for the Bluff and Cliff Drive study. 50 for Noble Gulch. Where am I? Cliff, Bluff. Minimal uh, city maintenance. 100, 100 for the minimal city hall maintenance. What's the next one? 20 for the charging station. But if we can get grants for it, great. Um, I'm willing to cut the roundabout. You guys are breaking my heart, but we'll cut the roundabout down to zero. Because <laughs> that's, that's where I'm getting some of the money for the wharf. Right. And I, I don't intend to ultimately cut it. No, I, I know. I, I know. strongly support it. I really do. I'm just, just giving you a hard yeah. time for hating all my <laughs> ideas. No, I'm just kidding. Um, where am I? So uh, cut the roundabout. Uh, Hundred thousand for the bike and pedestrian safety projects, and five hundred thousand to the Calpers, and that should bring us at like. Oh wait, yep, yep, and three eighty five for the resiliency fund. And that should bring us to like 3.45 or something along those lines. Yeah, boom. Between 3.5 and 3.7, everyone got a little bit. No one got everything. That's my motion. I and second. You will accept I'm it. There it is. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> well done. Uh, just uh, points of clarification. I didn't. Uh, so the fire uh, risk reduction, you zero uh, eliminated. Okay. No, I don't think anyone put anything towards that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Perry Park Bridge, you also eliminated. Only because no one else, you know, no one else put anything towards those either. Okay. Um, if we actually, I, 
actually I did, but it wasn't captured. So I'm going to put myself in uh, with the Sam. You know, you know, Steve okay. mentioned that we need to do something, so I was going along with this. But All right, well, it just didn't get captured, so that's fine. Well, I think this is dollars to each of those, and then we're at three point five something. I mean, I'm sorry, say that again, Councilman. The thesis. If we put fifty thousand dollars to each of those which is better than nothing, right? I mean, $50,000 worth of bridge maintenance is better than 100, or is not as good as 100,000, but better than nothing. And then same with the fire resiliency, uh, it said 20 to 100,000, so put 50 there. And we still come out at 3.5. Does that mean the I amendment to your so motion? That's a, yeah. <laughs> I accept the amendment. <laughs> All right, great. That's what I wanted to hear. All right. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Brooks. <laughs> um, so, Jamie, do, do, does the motion um, give you what you need? Um, it does. To move us forward. Excellent. That sounds good. Um, and so, with that, um, I'm going to call for. Oh, hold on. Just double check. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to um, go out to the public quickly, um, just to see, make sure no members of the public there's, um, wishes to speak to the motion um, at this time. Mayor Story, I do not see anyone with their hands raised at this time or any emails on the item. Okay. So I'll, um, I'll bring it back and ask for a roll call vote. I appreciate the compromise. I'll vote for it. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. Um, good work, everyone, and uh, thank you for your motion, Councilmember Peterson. Um, so with that, it brings us to um, item number um, nine, eight, excuse me, now item number eight, which is adjournment, um, in which at this time I will adjourn us until the next regularly scheduled uh, council meeting on March the 10th uh, at 7 p.m. So until that time, thank you everyone uh, be kind to yourself and be kind to others, and we'll see you around town. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye.